Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the Leading Edge Cricket Podcast. This is episode three of our England Watch spin-off series where we look at the depth chart and farm system of England cricket. We've done the openers, we've done the middle orders. Thank you for all your interactions, comments Ooh. and changes to our order, which is very, very reasonable actually <laughs> when you see them coming through. It is a hard job. You're trying to predict the future, you're trying to predict what someone's thinking and you're trying to put your own spin on it mm. as well. So today, episode three, we're going to work our way through Wicket keepers, mm. and this is a interesting one. It's a hot topic at the moment, Rich. It is. It is. If we'd have recorded this a couple of weeks ago, number one would have been a certain somebody. But since we are doing this post that Ireland Test squad being announced, um, so somebody else is number one. And, and England have always been blessed with the keepers, haven't we? But we've always had that debate. It seems since Alex Stewart and before of do you take the best keeper or do you take the batter that keeps uh, and, and can improve? So. It's a tough conversation, I think. Uh, there's some young players I'm really looking forward to talking about. But it's also a list where there's a certain couple of players already in the test side, Ollie Pope, Ben Duckett, that could do a job. But shall we? I think it's reasonable to say we're not going to include them on this list, but we will talk about where we think that they would drop in if England were in a pinch. Mm. Yeah, it is It is going to be an interesting one. And we're going to start, same as last time, we're going to start at the top, work our way down to 1-10. to 10. Um, There is a world where... Five to ten never play test cricket or play <laughs> test cricket again. But mm. you're just trying to create a top ten list because top ten lists are cool. Um, the, all the caveat <laughs> is we're after or trying to establish full time keepers, so we're not looking yep. for an Ollie Pope filling in for yep. a game or two or mm. Ben Duckett filling in for a game mm. or two. Yeah, uh, some exceptions to the rule may be used as we go through this list, but please don't hold it against us. Rich, where are we starting off at number one? We're on young Johnny Bairstow, otherwise known now as sneaky old Johnny Bairstow, 33-year-old Yorkshireman. Um, as discussed, obviously, in the top 10 middle order batters episode, he had one of the single greatest summers of Test cricket ever last year. Sadly for him and us, he sustained a really bad injury, didn't he, golfing, which meant he had an extended period away. Missed the winter, opened the door for a certain Harry Brook. Took his chance like no Englishman has ever done. So that means, how do we get Johnny Bester back into the England eleven? Well, the England selectors decided it was at the expense of Ben Folks, and he's taking the gloves, retaking the gloves, shall we say. He's a solid keeper, we know that, but he's not an elite keeper. Um, so we're back into that argument that I just mentioned, wasn't it? It's was like, how much do we value the best gloveman versus the batters that can keep? And I think, I don't want to be unfair, Johnny Bester is not a batter that can keep. He is a very good wicket keeper in his own right, but he is not quite a Folks ability there is he so um let's hope this decision doesn't come back to bite us anyway but i'm sure it won't he's been an exceptional player he's with the batting so far this summer he's not quite got firing has he but he's ready to go and i'm sure when that test cricket comes around he will be ready he will be ready he's a fighter johnny best though he headbutts you when he meets you um <laughs> cracking cracking player mm. he has kept Incredibly, a large amount of his county championship career, which may go under the radar. Mm. At 93 yes. games, he's, he's kept 75 times. Career average of 50, mm. averages 51 in matches that he keeps wickets. Uh, great player mm. um, for England that has really struggled for a role in the team sometimes. Mm. And it felt like, and this is the frustrating part, it felt like last year he found his role. And he executed it. You can play. Go be this version of yourself. Mm -hmm. You're a great, you know, world class player of spin. To be fair, averages 47 against spin in Test match cricket at a strike rate of 55, uh, strike rate of 58 against pace as well. Mm -hmm. Since 2002, these records are from Crit Metric. Um, excellent player. Nothing against him. The team's better with him in. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. The team is better with Besto in. 100%. Uh, great fighter, sort of guy that you need against mm. the Aussies. You came and saw him score that century at the back end of the Ashes series last year when he came in. And you also saw him also get into a scrap with someone in the crowd that uh, started calling him names. So, uh, big, big Bearstow fan. Great to see him back in. Hopefully, we can rekindle some of that 2022 form mm. with his six centuries being one of the greatest seasons an English player's ever had. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing. The batsman, Johnny Bairstow, of 2022, has to, you have to find a way to get him back in this England team. Hopefully, regain that form. However, my concern is his form with the bat when the gloves come. And I hope that giving him the gloves doesn't diminish that ability with the bat. I think all his, I think, is it most of his centuries that have come when he's a keeper have come in the first innings of a game. Uh, not just England's first innings, but literally the first innings of a game. So we just hope that the gloves don't detract too much from uh, his batting. But hey, who knows? Let's, we're looking ahead, fingers crossed, and he is absolutely locked in at that number one. Number two, then, is Ben Folks. 
This is a tough one. He was the man in possession, wasn't he? And this was the big conversation pretty much throughout the winter. And harshly, you know, you could say harshly, but possibly not unsurprisingly, he was the man that moved aside for Johnny Bairstow. In essence, really, you could say folks has been replaced by Harry Brook and, and the impact he made. Um, it's really interesting, isn't it? We, we asked a question, didn't we, you know, a little while ago. Um, if he should play the first Ashes test. And the people spoke and it was an absolutely resounding yes, wasn't it, when we put a vote out there. So it is interesting. I think a lot of people do think that Folks has been harshly treated here. Arguably the finest clubman in the country, but it's a little forgotten that he's also an excellent batsman. Uh, I think there's a tendency sometimes to think that the best keepers are not the best batters. Uh, that's how it can seem anyway. But Folks, overall first-class record, over 7,500 runs at an average of 40, 1,400s, now closing in on 1,000 test runs at 32 in his 20 cap so far. Solid test seven, could bat higher like he does for Surrey. Yeah, and um, we spoke about him on the almost the Ben Folks Appreciation yeah. Podcast where we talked <laughs> through the England squad where it was announced. Mm. It never never lets England down, always comes mm. in, always performs well and does enough. A career average of 32 in Test Match Cricket. Mm. He's never really been given a massive run, only 20 tests to his name in that time, which feels a little bit wrong. And for an England team that until this last 12 months has been pretty average over the time mm. since he's made his debut in 2018, he averages 0 0.90 above the match top six average. So really valuable player to the team. His average against spin is 35. Average against pace is 28. Strike rate against pace, 57. Strike rate of 43 um, against spin in, in that format in test match cricket. And over the last three, four seasons in county championship cricket, he's been immense. Average 75, 43, 73, 46 over the last four seasons. Uh, four centuries to his name. Not played that much cricket, but when he does, again, he just doesn't let anyone down. Um, really, just we've been through it a lot, but really unfortunate. We felt mm. like during the carnage of watching this England team play and how it can be, and there will be times where it's like South Africa where we get rolled and mm. it doesn't quite work, that folks can be the calming nerdling influence that can take a team through to victory or can mm. uh, play the role that allows you to get up to a score that's just enough to be able to challenge a game. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And after the Ashes this summer, we've got a five test series in India. I'm not sure if Johnny Bairstow wants to keep for five tests in India, especially on those spinning tracks. So Ben, folks, it's not over. The door's not shut, Ben. We'll see you again soon. Uh, number three, Rob, if we have injuries to Johnny Bairstow and Ben Folks, where would England go next? Would this be the point that Ollie Pope gets given the gloves for the odd test? Maybe even Ben Duckett gives it. It could easily be, but for the sake of this list, we're not going to go there. We are going to go with Sam Billings, 31-year-old Kent keeper. Um, it's, and we think that England are still considering Billings in this situation, and we think this is where he'd go first. So um, he, he got a first taste, didn't he, in Australia in, in 2022 when injuries meant he had to have a quick drive up the coast to link up the squad. Um, was seen as a bit of a white ball player, but he has really recommitted himself to the first-class county game in recent years. Overall first-class record, 3,500 runs uh, at 32. Vastly experienced would be ideal if there's a bit of a problem with folks and bears. However, this year it's not gone to plan with a bat. High score of 31, just 92 runs at, in 10 innings, Rob. Nevertheless, England know all about Billings, and if needed, he, they would not hesitate, I don't think, to put him in the England side to help him out. Mm. Yeah, it's not quite worked out for Sam Billings. Gone and earned some good money, though, and yeah. uh, more power to him in the IPL. Feels like that deal might be kind of coming to an end because his performance mm. have kind of tweaked off just a little bit. Mm. Uh, comes across a real top bloke, actually, um, mm. listening to him chat on things. And the story of him driving across Australia to try and get a game of Test Match Cricket is quite exceptional. Yeah. It's like you finish work at the car yard mm -hmm. at 12 o'clock and you've got a match starting at 1 o'clock and you've got mm. to fly across the city to go get there and you turn <laughs> up in your white. Talking about you there, Robert Matchett, if you're ever listening. Um <laughs> Mm. Do, do I think he'll come back in? If England are in a position where uh, we spoke about it before we came on air, we're wondering where to put him because we feel he's dropped down this pecking mm. order quite a lot. But he does have international white ball experience. He's got international test match experience. He just hasn't been very... His production's been quite mm. limited um, over the previous years because of playing in IPL and things like that. Mm. Hasn't scored a championship century since 2019 when he scored three centuries that year. Um it, it feels a bit gappy, but if England are in a position where there's two tests left, they've got a lead and they need a safe pair of hands that's not going to let them down, who's a great wicket keeper, then Sam Billings is 100% the person who's going to get the call. 
Yeah. And it um, kind of feel just a little bit like the three tests he played against Australia. That's a little bit difficult given that we got an absolute mm-hmm. battering. Um, and he's never, he's not got an opportunity since then and hasn't no. really done much since then in the Red Bull sphere as a whole. No, just for me, put Sam Billings in a little break glass in case of an emergency situation. That's how I see yeah. Sam Billings. He just sat there in the box, ready to go if England need him. <laughs> longer see him there knocking the glass. <laughs> Let me out. Yeah, with his little bat. Um, yeah. Longer term, so if Sam Billings, we think, is in that situation, the same as what we said about Pope and Duckett potentially would be a consideration. However, if we're looking longer term, and when we consider that Bairstow is 33 uh, and everybody gets older. This is how time works, people. He's not getting younger. Ben Folks is over 30 now. Billings is over 30. So what about what's coming next, Rob? Well, we think there's two players that it's going to be great to watch in the coming years. But the first one we've gone for is the England Lions wicketkeeper, 22-year-old Surrey keeper, Jamie Smith. He has potential to be an absolute star player. Ultra talented, 600s at 40 and above in about 42-ish first-class appearances so far. Um, he played for the England Lions over the winter, a couple of tests in Sri Lanka, where he scored the fastest ever Lions 100. Definitely in their thinking, longer term with the ageing, like we said, every chance he could be a test keeper one day. And as a gloveman, he's solid, still has plenty of time to improve. Obviously, he's working alongside someone like Ben Folks. He's not going to, uh, you know, he's gonna, how can he fail to, uh, to not improve with that as well? Um, as a batter, very easy on the eye, a fluent player, strong against spin and one with a really solid defensive technique. Also showing he can adapt his game to suit tricky conditions and match situations. A lot of grit about him as well. We don't think it's going to be long before he makes his step up from the Lions to full international honours in one format or another. Mm. Yeah, this is really interesting, actually. Great young player. He, he's got a uh, future England player banded all over him like it's a, yeah. I don't know, like it's his Instagram tag or something like that. <laughs> it's, it's all over him. But the, the mm. class is there. Averaged 40th back in 2021, 37.9 last year, averaging 45 this year. Three really solid scores of 50 and above as well. 97, I think it was against Middlesex on Sky the other week. Great player, scored a big double century last year. I think it was against Gloucestershire. And kind of does it all round. The stats, so this is up to round three four of the championship this year mm. so there's three rounds missing but ball by ball stats from 2020 to 2023 he's averaging near on 40 averages 56 mm. against spin and a 58 strike rate which is really important considering where england are going in the future and if you're in a position where ben folks he did ben folks put his back out or was his hamstring in his house walking around and slept <laughs> or something like that the other yeah, something like that, wasn't it? Yeah, he, he, he mischief. Like yeah, like, you just take you take that for what it is, and Besto doesn't come back and hit the ground running. Maybe the sort of guy who is a good wicket keeper. Maybe the sort of guy that is a good player of spin that you could see involved in this England team. Uh, I think for me, hopefully, it's probably a year or so away, and he's got mm-hmm. a little bit more opportunity to grow and keep getting better. Yep. But oh, he's all over the radar. Like there's mm-hmm. a big um, Jamie Smith map like a mm. police investigation thing with James Smith on it going number four. <laughs> How to get him in. Yeah, absolutely. It yeah. won't be long. And he's, he's a very, very fine player as well in the um, in list A, you know, 50 over cricket as well. That's when I first saw yeah. him um, a couple of years ago playing in that. He looks an absolute talent. Number five, this is the guy he's going to be battling for that England keeping spot, though. It's going to be James Rue of Somerset, 19-year-old left-hander. Taunton-born, local boy. He's made a brilliant start to life in first-class cricket, a bat of average of just under 50 um, in his first 13 or so first-class appearances. It includes 400s. This season, after six rounds, he'd led the run scorers in Division 1 with brilliant 5-3 runs at the top, only behind Pajara overall. Um, then in, that includes 300s. After the latest game, he now sits at 564 runs at an average of 62.66. Second in Division One, third in all of County Championship. Just wanted to make it very clear of, of the, the, the absolutely outstanding achievement for him with the bat so far. Um, and ever present in the England Under-19 World Cup squad in 2022, part of a very exciting group from that World Cup that are all going to start making their mark or already have started making their mark on the Championship. While Smith and others who we mentioned all have bags of potential, Rue could end up being the best of the lot, I think. Um, very early days for the young left-hander, so we shouldn't get too carried away, but we're going to get carried away. He's, he's a hell of a player and he's going to be very, very good. <laughs> yeah, he is. And he's, he's going to be around and mm. the future looks pretty uh, bright with the gloves for us as England cricket fans, to be fair. Four centuries to his name, Rich. All have come since 2022, July 25th. Yep. Three of them have come against Lancashire, <laughs> one against Essex. They are generally two very, very good bowling attacks mm. and both 
uh, all four of them Division One centuries. So mm. just a, a real lot to like about it. Only scored 25 mm. this week, but, you know, we've all got faults. Averages <laughs> 55 against spin, averages 31 against pace over the last couple of years. That's minus mm. a couple of his centuries from the last couple of weeks. So that average will go up over time. Mm. He's just he, he's everything that you want. Um, out of a cricketer. The fact that he's converting runs, the fact that he's young, he's mature, he understands the game, he understands the match situation that he's trying to do. He didn't care for his wicket when he was trying to win the game for his team and push it on and got out before lunch playing a, sorry, before tea playing a reverse sweep. Excellent player, going to be around a long time. Um, Smith and Rue, we can see conversations in five years' time going, who should be having the gloves at that (laughs) stage? Maybe one of them doesn't. Maybe one of them just comes a genuine top six batter and the other one's uh, a six in the lineup. With the gloves. Mm. Yeah, but either way, we're doing pretty good. And it wouldn't surprise me, like you said, if we see both Root and Smith in that England Test 11, possibly even in other formats as well at some point in the future. Right, that's your top five, Rob. We've rounded it out. We're now into that realm of, well, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe. not. Yeah, exactly. And and number six we've gone with is, is might be a little bit of a controversial one, but we've gone Phil Salt of Lancashire, who's 26. Um, he's more viewed as a white ball top order player, hasn't he, really? So an excellent batsman. But there's no reason why he couldn't develop into a really high-class test player who would fit into this McCullum stokes vision. Um, and he does keep wicket, although he might not have done it as much as maybe would have liked in county cricket. Um, 14 ODI, and t- uh, 16 T20 appearances for England. Plenty of experience in, re- in franchise cricket around the world. He's proven himself against the best in the world in those formats as well. Yet to play any county cricket championships this season, I believe, due to IPL commitments. Um, and a pretty steady overall um, first-class average of 32 with about 2,500 runs. Already around the England setup, you just feel like he would be part of the conversations going forward for the keeping uh, spot, potentially. You do. You, you do. You can see England probably having mm. conversations, mate, about this. Um, young, experienced, fearless in his approach at the crease. A career average of 32, a career strike rate of 71. He was basballing before basball mm. was around. Mm. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a decent record. Spent most of his time opening, 51 innings mm. uh, out of the 67 he's had opening, but then slotted into that Lancashire middle order last year, average 35, mm. uh, and did pretty well for himself. Hasn't actually kept as much in county cricket mm. As he has in other formats, but he is a keeper that can keep. Um, mm. His record keeping actually is better than it is when he's not keeping in county cricket. Averages mm. 43, uh, no centuries to his name. Attacking sort of mindset, really good against pace early doors. Uh, averages 49.40 against pace at a strike rate of 65.60. So I held that. I high, um, hold that in high regard. Mm. Definitely. Mm. I can I can just see it. You can see yeah. England kind of going, oh, you know, Bairstow's out, folks out. Yeah. Who could come in and do a job? Well, we had Will Jackson, Liam Livingston and Rian Ahmed called out, all maybe a little bit out of the blue <laughs> for Pakistan. Mm. Whether they do that in India is a different thing, but it's, it's the sort of guy that you could imagine coming in and doing a job and just yeah. going, hey, mate, go score at 70, 80 strike rate. Uh, this is your job. You're counterattacking towards mm-hmm. the bottom of the order. Definitely, definitely. And he is a player that, you know, he's more for the future as well, potentially. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, definitely one to consider. Now, at number seven, there's a man here that, similar to Sam Billings' conversation, there is no reason why England wouldn't be in a pinch. That Say this summer, if Bairstow and folks were missing, we need an experienced keeper to come and step in. Well, we've got him at number seven, but it could easily be at number three at the minute. And that's John Simpson of Middlesex. Uh, led the batting, uh, the run scoring charts for Middlesex last year. He's 34 now, left-hander, vastly experienced. Um, always been a good player, but really matured into a wonderful batter in the latter stage of his career, hasn't he? 2022, uh, 1,039 runs at an average of just under 65 with 300s and 650s. Um, that's damn good. We, we, you know, he maybe sneaks under the radar with his ability with the bat, but that tells me that he is absolutely top draw uh, when it comes to that. Um, he did represent England in three ODIs back in 2021 during the COVID impacted summer when England had to basically create a brand new squad. Um, and he'd be very deserving of a test cap, I think, if the situation did warrant his call up as a keeper, up there with the best in county cricket, uh, and would offer a real presence at number seven with the bat to go alongside his experience and keeping abilities. Nearly 9,000 runs, uh, an average of about 34 10 hundreds in his career so far, Rob. Mm. Mm, good player. Uh, let's go beyond that. Very good player. Very yeah. counter-attacking player. Scores at a great rate generally. Mm-hmm. Highly thought of in white ball cricket for Middlesex for a long time. And it was great to see someone of his age and his mm. ilk 
get a call up for England and get some ODI caps. Like, yeah, it, it was it was brilliant. Does he play for England? Probably not. But last year was his best year on record. It's his only thousand plus uh, county championship season. It's the only season he's out averaging over fifty. He averaged sixty four point nine four, and he averaged twenty eight point two zero better. Uh, than the top six players from the matches that he played in. He was 76 better, uh, 76% better than them. Average in Division 1 is a slight concern, only averages 29 in D1 and 37 in D2 across the years. Um, 59 average against spin, round it up to 60 if you really want to do that. That's pretty decent left-handed coming in down the bottom end of the order in India, given that 1-6 to six is, is now sick through a new variant of COVID. Um, could could be a thing mm. you never know you Absolutely. know stranger things have happened the fact that you got an odi call up like he did things happen mm. in the world but great county championship stalwart um yeah not a lot more you can say about the guy good keeper great um great batter yeah, absolutely. Wrong, wrong age, you know. Might yeah. have actually uh, done well if he was coming around ten years younger and got the opportunity to implement some of the white ball mm. uh, way of playing the game into a red ball during his twenties. Yeah, absolutely. There, there will be a lot of players out there, won't there, who are now looking at the way the game is being played, especially going up to test level and going, "Damn, I wish I'd been able to do that when I was younger." But I've been brought brought through the system to play in a certain way. And now the, the shackles are being you know, released, haven't they? Um, and players can play with so much more freedom and maybe Simpson would have been suited to that much younger. Never mind, you know, he's still a good option though. Right, number eight, Ollie Robinson, another man um, who could be pushing the likes of Jamie Smith and the likes of James Rue. He's 24, he's at Durham now, ex-Kent player. He did make that move. Um, he established himself as a high quality young player at Kent, but due to the gloves being taken by Billings and sometimes even Jordan Cox, he decided, I think wisely, to make the move up to Durham this off-season. Um, and he is playing as a wicketkeeper batter. He's inside that top six. It's already paying off for both Robinson and Durham. He's made a very, very good start to the summer so far. Um, whilst not in first-class county championship, he did, he's did. he got a career high, Rob, an impressive 206 not out in the one-day cup last year, which he smashed up just 131 mm. balls. That shows you the type of player he is and can be. Um, and I'm sure you'll talk about it, but in the latest round as well, he, he went, he, he got himself a 60 odd off very few deliveries as well. Real talent. Um, another young player like Smith, like I said, who could work his way into this test side in the coming years as a wiki keeper, or even, even as a middle order batter, such as is his uh, ability and potential. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really good move. And what I really like about it, he's taking control of the future that he wants to have. He sees himself yeah. as a uh, a batting wicket keeper, not just a batter in a team that might be yep. in and out a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's taken control of it really well. He scored about 114 mm -hmm. weeks ago against Derby. That was at over 100 dry rate from 107 balls and then played that 67 off 36 balls, knocking the last game. Mm -hmm. He's a great player. He's an attacking player. Career strike rate of 61.58. This year it's 88 but he's taken his game up a notch. He's actually added about 30 uh, mm -hmm. runs per 100 ball. So it's it's just working out really well for him. It's the third time in his career this year that he's averaging above the top six match average. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just a just a really good move. Like yeah. I said, the stats I've got around pace and spin and things like that, they're uh, relevant up to round four. So I don't think it includes one of his big 50s. But mm -hmm. this year you see a massive ramp up particularly against uh, spin up to round four. He's got a career strike rate against spin of 58. This year it's 117. Career strike rate against pace of 61. This year it's 81. He's going all out attack and backing himself and backing himself big. Mm, definitely, definitely. Real talent. I mean, he, he could bat at four or five for England in the future if he continues to progress and, uh, and improve. You could see a team, that is, this is ridiculous to say, but you could easily see a team that has a middle order consisting of Smith, Robinson and James Rue at some point in the future. It would not surprise me. All yeah. three are quality batters in their own right and also three very good keepers as well. Right, 9 and 10, Rob. I'm quite happy about that list to wait. 9 and 10, I'm starting to struggle. I've got to be honest. Um, so this is where I'd love people to say who, we, who we've missed when, once we get through this 10. But number 9, I'm going with a guy that has played for England. And he's still young. He's 26. And he, he still bats in the top, uh, usually about three, isn't it? James Bracey of Gloucestershire. Um, tricky analysis. Um, not long ago, June 2021, to be precise, he was in the test side, wasn't he? He's an exciting young batter who took the gloves. But his international arena uh, bow, shall we say, did not go at all well. 
And I don't think he's been anywhere close to return since. Last season, 702 runs at 27 with 200s. This year, he's had a steady start. He's just starting to pick up a couple of 50s along the way, isn't he? Um, he's still got time, though, hasn't he, to find that form again, to find that consistency that did propel him into the test arena. It's going to be a tough ask for him to come back, especially of how he struggled when he did make that debut. But he shouldn't be discounted yet. And I think he does deserve his spot here at number nine. Yeah, I, I do. They, they called him up for a reason because they believe he's got something about him. But at the time, he came up against the best team in the world, the mm. team that went and won the World Test Championship. Yeah. Uh, the bowling attack was outstanding of Wagner, Jameson, Bolt, Southie. It's an all-time New Zealand bowling mm. attack. You've probably only taken Sir Richard Hadley from another generation to stick <laughs> into that team attack. Mm. That's how good it was. Mm. And he had a rough time. Uh, Southie picked him up bold as a great thumbnail. We used of the middle stump car wheeling. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get that in there. Uh, Trent Bolt game out. He, he, he had a, a really tough time against a good team. Only averaged 2.67 uh, from three innings in test cricket. And he would love another shot to go yeah. and ride a few wrongs. But he was young. He was 23-24 yeah. when the call-up came. He hasn't had that bounce back yet. But remember okay. what we were saying about Keaton Jennings. Keaton Jennings got dropped and for the mm. next two years was a struggle. And yep. then he's gone on, evolved, got better, got better mm -hmm. mentally, got better technically, backed himself more and has come out a completely different player and is even better version than what he mm. was. And there's nothing to stop Bracey doing the same. Yep. You can start, start to see some increments. You can see an increase in strike rate. His mm -hmm. strike rate's gone up to 60. He's a career about 46 strike rate before mm. this season. It's now up to a 48. So trying to head in the right direction with that. A couple of 50s thrown into his name. Um, it's just, it's what you do when you get in. I say it a lot of the time, but it's what you do when you get in. Some of his good seasons had very similar records here where he gets out for less than 20, about 44, 50%. Uh, league average is normally about 50, 54%. He's below that, but he hasn't gone on and done anything mm. with those scores yet. So if he can start converting... Uh, doesn't help when you're playing in a team that's sometimes struggling sometimes because you're mm. forcing the game a little bit. Um, but he'll know all about that. Damn lot, sure, damn lot more than I will. So, mm. um, yeah, uh, he, he's on the list. He's he's on the mind. England will keep tabs on him to see mm. how he's gone. He's not completely forgotten because he's young. Just needs some time to get back to himself. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Let's round this one out, Rob. Number ten. Wow, right. 32-year-old Lancastrian wicketkeeper, or Lancaster, Lancashire wicketkeeper, should I say, not from there, but it's Joss Butler, Rob. If we're looking at a 10th available wicketkeeper for a test side, and, we, and bear in mind, this is a list for now, for this year. Next year, it'll be a different list. But if we're looking for now, we would have already got to Joss Butler, probably, wouldn't we? He would have had a phone call from McCullum if we were on the 10th wicketkeeper. We'd have, he'd have had that call way early in this, so we had to include him on the list, even though in reality his test career is more than likely at an end. Um, you just know McCullum would have loved to have found a way to include a batter like Butler in his test side. So he's there at 10. Talk to me. Mm. <laughs> I don't think Josh Butler is very far away from the lips of anyone in the England setup when they talk about a keeper. Mm. I really don't. Mm -hmm. And I think if they could, and it's why he went on and played 57 test matches, was they always wanted it to click. Yeah. And it didn't. Mark Rampakash, right. who was England batting coach, came out with great comments saying, yes. other than a fourth innings run chase, where it's like a one-day international or something like that, yeah. he it, it didn't click in terms of how he wanted to play the game. Yeah. He didn't know how to play the game or how to set the tone or how to yeah. bat at whatever rhythm he needed to. Mm -hmm. And... That's incredible for someone that talented that they didn't. Mm. And also quite brave of Mark Rampagash to come and say something like that about mm. someone and get, and kind of open mm. up to let other people see in because we all looked at it going, God, he just doesn't look like himself when he plays no. in the international arena. 100 innings in Test cricket, 2,907 runs, an average of 31, strike rate 54, two centuries to his name in that mm. time. Not a... <laughs> Not a great minus three in terms of top six match average for the games he played in. Um, for the stats collated by crickmetric.com, he averaged 33 against pace, 
47 against spin, which is kind of what you'd expect. Probably didn't attack pace quite like you'd expect him to. Like his white ball no. game has gone up a level since he mm. packed up after the last Ashes. Uh, not played county championship cricket since all the way back in 2018, which was one game. He's not really had a proper season in county championship cricket, mm. in county championship cricket since 2014 when he played mm. 10 games. So a long time ago. And in fact, that's when his last century was in <laughs> uh, county championship cricket. Mm. There is a scenario where Bairstow and folks are unavailable and yep. it is Josh Butler. Number 10 yep. on our list, Josh Butler is the one they call to and say, Josh, come in, we need you for three tests. Yeah, 100%. absolutely. That's the thing, isn't it? Is, is we've gone through this list and there's some amazing young players uh, like Robinson Smith and Rue in particular, Salt as an option as well. But if folks and Bairstow were unavailable this summer, you are looking at Billings. You're looking at John Simpson, potentially. You're looking at Butler. And maybe Butler wouldn't have had the issues he had in Test cricket in the first, second and third innings of Test if he had a McCullum and Stokes just saying, go out and play. Go and play you your game. Think that's just, mm. It's just set up for people like him, for people yeah. like Bairstow that are exquisite ODI mm. batsmen, exquisite T20 players that they could come into this system and just work a bit like Duckett. Duckett yeah. was like, oh man, I want a piece of that. Yeah. And he's come in and hit the ground running and looks like a test match opener for the next four or five years. If he can get through the ashes with a century to his name and 300 runs, you're looking at Duckett for a long time. My, my, This isn't the Ben Duckett wicketkeeper podcast, but my problem with Duckett is if Duckett goes and gets a really poor series against Australia, we go to uh, India, which is spin-friendly, potentially without the best player of spin in the team. (laughs) Anyway, that's a conversation for another day. Yeah, absolutely. So that's your 10. Um, Without going into detail of anyone else, is there any other names that you you did consider to this list? There's Michael Burgess Warwick, who maybe could have been... But it could have snuck on here. Is anyone else that you'd have, uh, you know, thought got close? Mm. Uh, I think Burgess is a good shout, particularly the f- the way he goes about his game. Mm. I think it was last year he he smashed two like big hundreds mm. with huge strike rates. Um, again, probably a long a long way down the list. Jordan Cox is another one who's mm. got oodles of ability. Uh, strike rate of forty seven in his career, maybe mm. slightly low because he's quite a good one day player as well. Mm. But you'll probably see those things like strike rates rise, even though it's actually gone down this year to forty one. But mm. um, he's another one. Uh, Tom Moore's you could talk about from knots, but mm. you're just pushing the boat out so far. No. Like it, it yeah. doesn't feel achievable. His um, mm. His performance plus, so the top six match average uh, of the players in the matches that he's played in, it, hundreds in the middle. I, I explain this every time because new listeners come in. Uh, yeah. If you're 150, you're 50% better than the match average. If you're 50, you're 50% worse. Tom Moore's out of wicket keepers over the last three or four years. Haven't got the stats directly in front of me, but he was one of the the, the lesser performing wicket keepers in the mm-hmm. county championship mm-hmm. that have played X amount of innings. So, yeah. Yeah, I think the list we've got is pretty comprehensive. It is a difficult place in the team because there's only one mm. in every team, and that means there's probably only about 18 keepers in the county championship that's kind of doing it week in, mm. week out. But I feel pretty happy with the with the list. So let us know below yeah. if there's any changes you would uh, go for, whether or if there's anyone on this list you go, actually, Ollie Robinson's better than a, a number yeah. eight on this list. Actually, the way he's playing and how he mm. operates, is like he's going to be a four or five. He's going to be England Lions going forward. Yeah, absolutely. And just a quick note as well, you know, these are keepers we are talking about, but the way cricket is now, it's the batting ability comes almost before. And, and there's, we have to assume that all of these guys keep wicket very well. You know, yeah. there's, there's not much between any of them. We can argue that folks, maybe Simpson is better than, you know, the, the other eight on the list. So we could play, maybe change the ranking slightly. But when it comes to keeping ability, they're all about there. They're all where they need to be to play test cricket. So there's not much difference really uh, in that. It's not like we're throwing somebody in that's hardly ever kept wicket and saying, give him a go. Um, yeah. So that's, that's you know, just we haven't gone into detail on that, but that's why it really is about that batting ability that does make the difference, I think, in this list. It certainly does. So thank you so much for listening, everyone. Like I said, leave your top 10 list below mm. um, and we'll be back again. We've got all-rounders to come. We've got seamers and we've got spinners. And we've got England versus Ireland starting next week. So we're going to be back for then. Have a great day. Have a great week. Enjoy the weekend. Hopefully you get some sun. We'll see you soon.